Hey, let's play Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Just gonna jump right in, so hold on to your hidden blade, I guess. That's the first thing I saw. Uh, so, just so you know, last time on Assassin's Creed, we had our ever-loving protagonist be abducted by assassins and been made to learn the ways of the assassin. And you were following this guy, actually. That's, uh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Try and stab his throat. But yes, Ezio is the person whose memories we're currently reliving because he was learned, he was informed of an apocalypse. But we'll be get to that later, once he finishes looking at the sun and turning himself blind. Yeah, that wasn't a good idea there, Ezio. <sighs> okay. Loading up. Rebecca, what's going on? I have to run some diagnostics. I'll get back to you. Diagnostics on my brain. Be careful there, Rebecca, because we're looking at the sun again. I don't know why it's really not a smart idea. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, just keep looking at that, Desmond. That's very smart. Oh hey, it's Minerva, in the bottom of the wagon, dedicated to the Judeo-Christian god. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Desmond? But that's Ezio! Okay, so this is actually really confusing, even if you have watched... Or, sorry, played uh, Assassin's Creed 2, because she's giving a message to Ezio who will then, through his genetics, transfer it to Desmond, who then relives it through Ezio, and apparently no time travel is evolved? I don't believe that. I really don't. And this is the basement of the Vatican, where we just beat up the Pope. True story. We beat up the Pope. Uh, it was pretty epic, actually. I. Might want to do Assassin's Creed 2 soon after this, but like doing just Assassin's Creed would be a bit boring. So we'll try and do mix it up a bit. Oh, come on, you can do it. No, no, you can't. Blowy stuff is coming out, and now it's hiding. Come on, you can do it. Just grab it by the bottom. Okay. There you go. No, no. You weakling. No, I love you, Ezio. You and your one love. What's with that? Huh. Oh, yeah, we're now we're trapped. We're definitely trapped. This is an ingenious trap cultivated by the first civil... Okay, why aren't you crushing him? You're trapping us, but you're also giving us a chance to get out? Uncle. Oh hey, it's a Mario. I... I'll be honest, in Assassin's Creed 2 I didn't care for him, although that might have just been his first line. Hold E to turn on Eagle Vision. Okay, so this is one of the confusing things that Ubisoft did. Um, this is the only time you can ever use your Eagle Vision to highlight a path that will lead you up a wall or something. You can't ever do this again. It's... yeah. There's a lot of stuff I think they would have taken out if they had uh, known how frustrating it would be. Like, for instance, we'll get to this once we get back to our male shepherd protagonist. And there's a trail of red when you use your eagle vision. And people think it's blood leading somewhere. It's not. It's just there. Yeah. So, also, one of the things about playing Assassin's Creed on PC, the control scheme changes pretty much every game. I last played Assassin's Creed 4, so it was shift instead of uh, space. Or no, right mouse is what it is. Yeah. So, right mouse plus space is free run, and I was using shift last time. So, 
Excuse me, pardon me. Uh, don't know why you're not trying to kill me since I tried to kill your Pope, but... Did Rodrigo manage to hurt you? Barely. My armor blunted his attack. Oh, uh, yes. The old man, he didn't manage to hurt me. It's funny about Rodrigo in this game because he just decides after Ezio tried to kill him. Yeah, fuck it. I'll just do what the hell I want. He's the Templar Grandmaster, and it never occurred to him to actually do anything. So, who knows. Oh, a lot of, uh... A lot of guards here. Yup. Uh, whoa. Okay, you guys are a lot better at witty banter at f during fighting than I am. Because I'm going to be concentrating a lot here. Just... Just the way I am. I don't know what causes it. Probably just I want to do well. And I'm an average casual gamer, I suppose. Like, I can do well in this, but I'm not going to do amazing. Like, it, I'm not going to get 100% in this. I can tell you that now. If you want to get completionist stuff, you should probably just find another video because I'm not going to get everything. I'll get some stuff on the way that I find, but yeah. So this this is what sold this game for me, the free running aspect of it. Like most games either I go for story or control schemes. So stuff like Batman Arkham Asylum and its sequels, Assassin's Creed, Mirror's Edge was a really good one, but something but my computer corrupted that, so I can't really play it well anymore. Get to like 2 FPS during the first mission. It was very frustrating. So yeah. And just a few more guards. No, we're not going that way. Huh. Oh, Mario. Mario. I'm sorry, I'll stop that. I mean, it's not like we're going to... You know. Spoiler alert. Uh. It's also amazing to me that all these buildings are just prime... in prime position to be jumped and run on. Nope. How is this working? How is this working? Oh, and yes, the tower. You always have to have the towers in Assassin's Creed, because otherwise, what will you climb? That's actually difficult. Yes, let's... No, no, we're not dumping the artifact that just about caused a whole bunch of people to die. Okay. That's not going to come back and bite us later. Oh wait, no, actually I don't think it does. Huh. And out in the great lush Roman countryside, you have the title just floating there, superimposed over Roma. Melt. Melt Rome! Melt to the ground! They say Rome was built in a day, but certainly got destroyed pretty fast in that simulation. Sweet ponytail, Ezio. Okay, so... Monteligioni. I've never been good with Italian pronunciation, so... Monteligioni. No. Monteligioni. Maybe. My friend Chris would probably be able to pronounce it better. Sometime far in the future, Vero. Then we need not worry about Chris Settingiano. I think that's, that's how said. you pronounced it. Uh, but yeah. Uh, this horse is slow. Oh, jeez. That was a close cannonball. Why were they firing at us? Yeah, you tell him, Ezio. We only installed them a few days ago. My men are still being trained in their use. Well, if they're still being trained, then maybe they shouldn't shoot while there are people in the field that could die. 
Seriously. If you killed the two ruling... Uh... Governors, I guess? Of this... Of this city. Then... Where the hell are you? Seriously. Where are you? Uh, plus, I mean, this... This place is obviously an assassin's community, right? This is their base. Why haven't the Templars attacked? And if they have, why haven't they stopped? Why have they stopped? But then we'll get back to that. Thanks to you. Oh, hot sister. Hot, hot, hottie. It's good to be home. How is mother? She's yes. Fine. I heard you were returning, but well, I she wasn't fine in my playthrough of Assassin's Creed 2. I sort of left her comatose. But, like I said, I'm not... I don't plan on getting all the collectibles. Like, I will if I don't have anything better to do, but those feathers are really hard to get. Yes, questions. Questions for... about stuff that Ezio really doesn't know anything about. Claudia Auditore. Let's look her up. Third child, blah blah blah. Yeah. Another thing that makes this so good, though, is Ezio is a very compelling protagonist. He, especially compared to, uh, the American voice in ancient Arab Empire, Altair, and very one-dimensional Connor. Like, I I wanted to like Connor, but I'll be honest, he wasn't as good a character as Ezio. And, oh yeah, I suppose we have to go do errands. But we'll get to that next time next episode. Hopefully we'll do this better. So...